everyone, Chris here from Midwest Coaster Fans. Thanks for joining us. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button. This is going to be the Kentucky Kingdom and Hurricane Bay COVID-19 Preparedness Plan released on May 7th, 2020. We'll put the link in the description below. And with that being said, let's go ahead and start on this. And this should be a good example that other parks around the country will probably start to use or already have started to implement. And things that we've already talked about priorly and we hope that you enjoy this information as it's going to be information that we're going to be talking about a lot lately, especially in the upcoming months. So as we go to page two of this, uh, we will be looking at the background and then we'll go over to the CDC data. So in addition to its extensive standard operating procedures, emergency action plans, team member handbooks, safety manual and training programs, Kentucky Kingdom Management has developed a comprehensive plan to respond and repair for operating conditions while considering COVID-19. These plans follow the current guidelines provided by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, as well as local government and health authorities. And then it goes into the background and talks about how 91% of COVID-19 related deaths in Kentucky were 60 years of age or older, most of whom had serious pre-existing conditions. Of the 240 deaths, 51% were residents with long-term care facilities. Uh, there were 969 deaths related to the flu. Then it talks about other things and it says, according to CDC, there's no evidence that COVID-19 can spread to people through water and properly chlorinated, chlorinated and maintained pools or water play areas. And then it talks about how it has 80,000 season pass holders who frequent the park. Uh, most of the time is four times per season. 24% uh, are under the age of 11. 26% are between the ages of 11 and 16. 20% are between the ages of 17 and 33. 24% of the ages of 34 and 53. 4% between the ages of 54 and 64. And 2% are the ages of 65 and older. So it basically says that 50% of Kentucky Kingdom visitors are under the age of 16 and 94% are under the age of 54. So that basically tells you that a lot of their visitors are not going to be under the whole idea of the extreme. And those that are 60 years of age or older are considered to be more high risk. And then it talks about that they'll initiate or institute physical distancing of six feet in all directions per guest or family unit given that common areas at kentucky kingdom total 606,916 square feet the maximum attendance at any given time should be no more than 16,858 visitors this number is based on one person per 36 square feet however data shows that households or parties visiting kentucky kingdom are generally composed of three individuals. Our calculations regarding maximum attendance do not include consideration for household party groupings are very conservative. The park will ensure no more than 16,858 visitors are allowed in the park at any time until the physical distancing mandate is lifted. In addition, as a park report details, all ride retail and game locations promote six feet of physical distancing in all queue lines. Please note that such areas such as restrooms, changing rooms, retail stores, and queue lines are not included in the common area calculation of 606,916 square feet of capacity. Also, over 69,000 square feet of space is available in pool areas of Hurricane Bay, thus providing even more space for visitors. So that just kind of goes over how many they're going to allow at one time, which would be 16,858 visitors. Obviously, you're going to have to follow the guidelines given, which are given in this extensive report. As we go to page three of this, the pre-opening plans, daily team member and contractor screenings include, day, uh, include temperature tracks, system-based questions, and other assessments recommended by CDC. Team members and contractors are asked to self-screen and report any illness symptoms. Team members are instructed not to report to work if they have flu-like symptoms. Social distancing is enforced. Face coverings are required while in public places and provided to team members. Emphasis on personal hygiene in all training programs and team member contract communications. Regular cleanse and sanitizing of high 
touch point locations and restroom facilities, isolation of contractors within job sites, installation of additional hand sanitizing stations, work from home option for all office staff, interviews and team member onboarding completed remotely via web meetings, phone calls, and online platforms. So obviously all part-time and full-time employment for the upcoming season will be done virtually. Team members, training modules conducted online until in-person training can be conducted, preparedness coordinator, and evaluation plan. So that's the pre-opening plan. So this is all the things that they're working on right now. I believe as soon as they get the go-ahead uh, to hire staff and know when the operating season is going to start, that's when you're going to see more part-time and full-time staff being hired. And obviously a lot of the training can be done online, but obviously some operational training and things of that nature has to be done in park because they have to have hands-on for that. But other things can be done online and looks like they already have a plan for that. So that's great news for the pre-opening plans. And the temperature from what I understand, from what I'm reading in a bunch of different areas, and we'll go on uh, with this as we go to uh, page four here in a second. But we're going to go on to operating plans. So communicating guest guidelines for visiting. So all the guest guidelines for visiting will be communicated effectively. Guest temperature screening before park entry. And we'll go over that in a minute, what the temperature you have to read has to be at. Regular sanitation of high touch point areas. That includes you know, queue, line rails, and ride vehicles. Reduce capacity of attractions to promote social distancing. Reduce face-to-face -face transmissions by providing mobile ticketing and food ordering options. Barriers or hygiene screens to limit contact between guests and team members. Indoor dining areas are closed and no self-service food options. So I imagine all that's going to be done via obviously an online ordering system. So they're probably working on that app right now. Installation of additional hand sanitizing stations throughout the park. Provide and require team members to wear face coverings as long as it's safe to do so. Encourage guests to waste to wear face coverings, establish signs and symptoms communication plans with the park's health services department, promote social distancing with signs, ground markings, and audible instructions, provide team member PPE for job function and social distancing requirements, locate park furniture to encourage social distancing. The park's health services department EMT protocols provided by medical director and Kentucky Board of Emergency Medical Services regarding systematic COVID-19 guests for team members. So that's a lot of stuff they have to cover. And it goes more in it, the information here, it goes more into the guest guidelines and communication. So we're gonna look under the section that says communication. And the communication part says proactive communication to guests regarding guidelines provided before arrival via Kentucky Kingdom website, social media platforms, and direct emails to season pass holders. Use of existing communication systems Example, continuous PA announcements, signage on-demand PA announcements, and area-specific PA systems and microphones to provide clear instructions to guests. So a lot of the communication is going to be done through email, through the website, through PA announcements, through signage. So there's not going to be any question on what you're going to have to do and abide by while you're at the park. And then the park says, do not visit if you have symptoms of illness or feeling ill or have had recent illness. You have any of the prevailing conditions or risk factors identified for the CDC, by the CDC, and prevention. So, obviously, sorry, I'm reading this wrong, but it's Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC for short. Asthma, diabetes, heart, liver, lung, or kidney disease, immunocompromised, which means you're immune systems compromise, obesity, and over the age of 65. So they're asking these people that have been identified as high risk to not visit the park if they're able to. Obviously, they can't say you can't visit the park, but they could recommend that these type of high risk people do not visit the park. So let's go under temperature checks. Guests and team member temperature screenings using touchless infrared thermometers before entering the park. Any guest or team member with a measured temperature of 100.4 or higher will not be permitted to enter. 
and will be advised to follow the instructions of local health officials. Hand sanitizing and hygiene guidelines. Guests should wash or hand sanitize hands frequently by using the restroom facilities and hand sanitizing stations located throughout the park. Signs with proper hand washing procedures will be posted in all restrooms. Guests and restrooms will observe proper physical distancing. So I guess that's on us. They're not going to have a staff member available to make sure this is being done. So we have to make sure we do a lot of these things ourselves. And obviously their question remains, you know, going back to temperature checks. Uh, a lot of people out there are saying, you know, you could take an Advil or an ibuprofen, down your temperature below that and still be able to enter the park. If you're doing that, you're selfish. But you know, there's a lot of people out there like that that are probably going to try to do that if they're running any type of fever. Don't know why people would try to do that. I'd rather visit the park when I'm feeling well instead of feeling bad. But we know we have people out there like that. And let's go down to the section covering face coverings. Kentucky Kingdom team members will wear coverings as mandated by state government and CDC while safe to do so in performing job functions. Guests are encouraged to follow the same directive while wearing a face covering while entering the park. If safe to do so, face coverings are not provided for guests but available for purchase at cost in several locations at the park so the question remains on that how much are these going to cost which we know we'll find out soon uh what kind of mask can we enter the park with that are recommended from the park and then also there's other things that we have to look at as well in regard to this so uh, my recommendation to courts is if you're able to find an n95 mask that would be my first choice over any other mask because it's almost guaranteed to be 100 percent. but then the whole thing with if the temperature is 95 degrees or in the 90s or even in the upper 80s it's going to be extremely hot and uncomfortable to wear these face coverings so i imagine it'll be recommended but not required which okay i know some other parks are providing it but i know it's a cost measure that kentucky kingdom has to take so and then physical distancing is the last part and, and guests should respect the physical distance between their party and other parties with a minimum of six feet of space. Ground marking, signs, audible instruction, and team member instruction serve to remind guests of this policy. So that concludes page four of this. And I know this is a lot of information that we're going over, so we apologize if you had to sit through it, but this is a lot of information, a lot of good information, a lot of information that you're going to have to soak into your brain and prepare because these are the type of standards or there are going to be a lot of other parks besides Kentucky Kingdom. So as we go to page number five here, the enhanced cleaning and disinfecting program, this is extremely important because this is the type of cleaning program that Kentucky Kingdom is instituting into their parks. And this is the same thing that is recommended by CDC. So daily nine point cleanse and sanitizing. Kentucky Kingdom performs an entire park cleaning using nine point cleanse and sanitizing process. All products and processes follow guidelines provided by CDC and chemical manufacturer safety data sheets. Disinfectant sanitizer products meet the standards of EPA approved emerging viral pathogens claims that are expected to be effective against SARS COVID 2. So I, I imagine it's co- uh, SARS through COV 2. So I imagine that's coronavirus uh, level 2 or whatever it is based on data for harder to kill viruses. And then they give a link for that. We'll put the links below so you could look at the guide that Kentucky Kingdom gave and also the links that they provide as well. So you guys could check up on all this information by yourself as well. But team members are trained to follow the nine point cleanse and sanitizing for services park wide. So this includes nine point cleanse and sanitizing standards. It's read solution labels, note dwell time so what a dwell time is is like a recommended time that the product would sit before you wipe or before you mop up an area so like let's say you use a sanitizing spray you spray an area you have to let it sit for at least two minutes before wiping it clean that that's what a dwell time means wear appropriate personal protective equipment obviously that would include goggles masks uh, that would include maybe even a suit depending on what they're planning on cleaning Clear debris from surface. So that's just the standard cleaning technique that most parks use. They have their own 
janitorial department or whatever you want to call it, custodial department. And, you know, they sweep and clean the park. So that's one of the steps. Washing the surfaces. Apply appropriate sanitizing or disinfecting solution. So obviously for each job that they have there, they're going to have some appropriate method that they have to use. So if it's a spill, they would have to use a certain type of solution. So that's what it's talking about there. Allow the surface to remain wet for the recommending dwell time. So that's the same thing as their read solution labels. Note dwell times. So after you spray it, then you're going to have to obviously let it sit for a certain amount of time before wiping or cleaning the surface. And then it says to clear, sanitize, or disinfect by washing or wiping. Remove and discard PPE appropriately and wash hands. And what we saw all over kind of what's going on in Shanghai Disneyland is that they have special trash cans to throw away masks and certain types of PPE equipment. I imagine it's going to be considered a biohazard. And that's what I'm assuming they're going to consider this stuff is a biohazard now. Which I'm pretty sure they already have already. But if they have it, I'm pretty sure that's what it'll be considered. That's why it needs to be disposed of separately. The problem is making sure that guests dispose of this properly when they exit the park or also that employees do the same so that's going to be the hard part I imagine there's going to be people always paying attention to make sure people are doing the appropriate things we hope that guests would do the appropriate things but of course that's assuming that everybody cares and that everybody pays attention which you know Many of you that have been to parks know that that is not always the case. Not everybody follows the rules. It's just the way society is. Going over to page six is the point of sale. So these are the things that's going to happen. So barriers are installed between team members and guests, which all of us have experienced this at grocery stores and elsewhere. So we already know how to deal with that. Point of sale system permits only one cashier at a time to use point of sale device. Obviously, they want to make sure that nobody's touching and uh, infecting certain areas so that's the reason for that ongoing installation of self-serve credit card readers mobile ticketing and food ordering options for guests regular sanitizing of point of sale equipment so these are all the things that we're already used to going to the stores going to restaurants and we're used to no touch processes for a lot of these things for admission, guests are incentivized to purchase t online tickets by providing a discount for tickets purchased via the website. Remote season pass processing options allow guests to upload photos via the website and opt for delivery of season pass to home addresses. Admission is validated via touch scanning equipment. Admission information systems calculate entry totals in real time, allowing management to monitor and control capacity. So... They're going to encourage people just to purchase online. I imagine with the online reservation system, that's the only way you're going to be able to do it is either you're going to have to reserve it and purchase it ahead of time or be a season pass holder. I don't really think they're going to allow people to go to the gate and purchase tickets, but then again, it could possibly happen. And obviously, it's going to be encouraged that you do an online reservation system. That's what's being encouraged everywhere where you put how many are in your party, the names. That way, when you go up there, they have an accurate count. I don't think they're just going to allow anybody to go in the park and then turn people away. I could be wrong, but from what I'm reading everywhere and what I'm seeing everywhere, it's an online ordering or online reservation system that they're trying to get people to do. And then the food and beverage culinary department, these are procedures uh, that they're uh, instituting in there, barriers between team members and guests, separate team members perform suit. Food handling functions and cashier functions elevated emphasis on team member hand washing. Team members practice social distancing monitored by the culinary management. Separate ordering and pickup areas at all locations. Prepackaged condiments, napkins, utensils, and straws. Food is served in containers or covered. Elimination of self-serve food and beverage options. So obviously everybody's going to have their drinks made for them. You're not going to be able to do refills anymore. Uh, staff member will probably do it for you. Doesn't mean that's going to go away. Just means that you're not going to be the one to do it. Indoor restaurants are closed. Order pickup and outdoor dining only. 
Six foot distances are marked on the ground and queue areas leading to outdoor windows. Addition of nine point cleanse and sanitizing program for high touch surfaces. And obviously that's what we just talked about. And now we go into the part that everybody wants to hear about the most, rides. So these are the standard operating procedures uh, that they're probably gonna keep. And obviously they've already presented to the local government, which would have been Louisville and the state government, which is the state of Kentucky. So this is specific <laughs> to Kentucky Kingdom. Obviously, like I said, other parks are probably initializing other type plans and this is an extensive plan i know it's a lot of information like i said before but it's important that we all read it understand it so that we're better educated when we go into the parks so for rides standard operating procedures for rides follow manufacturer manuals state inspection requirements industry best practices and recommendations from astm international committee for amusement rides and devices in addition the following modified operating plans developed by IAPA, which is the organization that basically recommends different operating procedures and management techniques by amusement parks across the world, apply to each ride. Ground markers placed every six feet in queue lines. We've already talked about that in prior videos. We've already seen this. The United States is probably going to have stickers. Uh, Disney World might be the only one that institutes maybe something separate, which you stand in between the st uh, stickers, which is kind of weird to me. Uh, I think standing on top of the stickers makes more sense. But seat markers indicating a valuable ride vehicles and seats with consideration for physical distancing. Unavailable ride vehicles and seats are indicated and blocked off to prevent access. Ride operators use automated audible messages or PA systems as direct communication to instruct and enforce loading and loading procedures while following physical distancing nine point cleanse and sanitizing program for high touch services we already went over that and that's going to mean that they're going to use certain cleansers to clean the rides and i imagine after each cycle or each train for roller coasters you're going to have a cleaning process and it might be spray wait a minute then wipe so we might be looking at between three to four minutes between uh, ride cycles. But you know what? It's something that we're going to have to be patient at if we choose to go to the parks this year. Remember, this is going to be a lot of patience, a lot of waiting, and a lot of things that we have to remember in our heads as long as respecting the staff members, respecting the park guidelines. And if we do all these things together, we could eventually see the time where parks go back to kind of normal operating procedures. But for now, these are the standards that we're going to have to abide by in order to make park operations easier for the staff and employees and also for other guests around us. And as you see on this photo, it shows the kind of thing that'll be in the queue lines and then it'll also show which seats will be open and there'll be a sticker directing that. Retail and games, standard operating procedures for retail and games and, and follow industry best practices. And this just goes over retail stores are identified with capacity maximums and team members present to enforce capacity and physical distancing. Ground markers and counter markers are placed to identify physical distancing, nine point cleanse and sanitizing program for high touch surfaces. Going over to aquatics. Of standard operating procedures for aquatic areas follows Ellison Associates programs and training, manufactured manuals, Louisville, Metro, Department of Public Health and Wellness Guidelines and Inspection, industry best practices for recommendations from ASTM International Committee for amusement rides and devices. In addition, the following modified operating plans developed by APA certified attraction managers, ICAM, and licensed Ellis and Associates safety and health instructors apply to aquatic areas. Ground markers every six foot in queue line areas. Modified loading methods to enable physical distancing. Closed attractions that may require grouping of parties to meet minimum rider requirements. Team member instruction and enforcement of physical distancing. Additional PPE is outlined by Ellis and Associates. HEPA viral bacterial filters to deliver oxygen through BVM and resuscitation masks is outlined by Ellis and Associates. 
Modified training practices that eliminate shared equipment and disinfection between each use. And that, I want, I'm not really going to go over too much because that's more for the employees, I imagine, but it's going to kind of be the same standard uh, six foot distancing. Not sure how the wave pool would work. I imagine staff members will be monitoring that and lifeguards, obviously, to ensure that people are maintaining six feet apart, unless you're like in a group and then obviously the group could stay together. And then the first aid operating procedures. Assessment of symptoms before entering six-foot space. Additional use of PPE guideline outlined by medical protocols. Surgical mask provided a patient based on medical protocol and result of assessment. So that's that for that. And then this kind of goes over the safe workplace practice. You can read this yourself. And this is just mainly for the administrative process. And this is kind of going over the same thing again. Uh, so we're not going to go over page nine really, but over on page 10, safe workplace practice, team member temperature checks. Obviously that's the same thing we talked about earlier. hundred point four higher will not be allowed to enter. And they're going to check all staff members before they enter the park on that day. And I think that should be changed. This is just my personal opinion, but it should be checked throughout maybe the shift just a couple times to ensure that nobody's running a fever at all, just to prevent, even if they don't have the standards when they enter to ensure that they keep this up as well and this for the staff members for you know guest safety as well and team member face coverings all kentucky kingdom team members are provided face coverings as part of their uniform they be worn during each shift team members are trained in the proper use and cleaning of face coverings personal protective equipment and then Kentucky Kingdom provides PPE to team members and maintains equipment and appropriate inventory levels. Equipment list this is your, the PPE list that will include this in its examination gloves, face shields, isolation gowns, surgical masks, cloth face coverings, and safety glasses. And there's a bunch of links before, or sorry, below. And like I said before, this link to this whole guide will be provided in the description. So you could go through this yourself, and there's a hyperlink in the actual guide so you could actually go in here and use the hyperlink and actually see what they're talking about all the guidelines that cdc recommends and things of that nature now here's how it's probably going to work so we're probably going to arrive and the minute that we arrive there's going to be probably a tent set up that's going to check our temperatures that's going to lead into the front entrance from after you do the temperature check, they're going to have you pre present an online reservation, I imagine, that shows how many are in your party. From there, they're probably going to go to your either your season pass or your ticket that was purchased online to allow you entry into the park. After you do that, it's probably going to be recommended in, so in signage and stuff like that for you to put on your mask if you have one or if you choose not to, to, pro to follow the proper social distancing standards set throughout the park we know that they're going to have markers all over the park to ensure that nobody's standing next to each other now 18,000 or sorry 16,000 people is still a lot of people uh, so the park knows that and obviously I imagine the reservations are going to be half I imagine they're going to do reservations in advance because if you turn people away at the gate like I stated before you're creating some sort of disaster. And what I mean by disaster is I mean you're going to have a lot of people arguing and fighting with you if you implement an online reservation system and you don't even let anybody enter the parking area unless they have it. That prevents a lot of things. So I think a lot of these things also start with the parking structure. And I think you have to have a reservation to even enter in. So maybe that'll start even as you enter into the parking area, you'll have to present how many are in your party. Just as things to consider. This is a lot of information. I definitely, definitely appreciate you guys for standing with me. This whole entire uh, presentation of this and uh, discussion of this. And I think this is important information for all of us to know. And as more parks release their guidelines, I'm pretty sure that a lot of theirs are going to be similar to Kentucky Kingdom's. And we'll kind of go over it. But in the future, we'll just go over any changes that we might see or anything that kind of sticks out to us. But this is a very descriptive guide. And I think Kentucky Kingdom did a great job on this. 
Uh, so with that being said, I appreciate you watching our video. Please subscribe for future content for Midwest Coaster fans. And again, this is Chris signing off. Until next time.